Good morning and welcome. We have been given another day to praise the Lord. And we are so thankful to come together this morning, whether you are with us here in person, whether you are watching from home, from whatever part of the country. It's so good that there is no place on this earth that is not touched by the love of God. And let us now prepare our hearts, our minds to worship that almighty God.
Good morning, everyone. Today's Centering Words comes from Romans chapter 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This morning, let's stand as we are able for the call to worship. And as we come together this morning, I pray, open wide the doorways of our sanctuary. May the King of glory come into our midst. And who is this King of glory? This King of glory is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Open the doors of your hearts to receive this King of glory. May our spirits and our hearts receive his blessing now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, our Father, we thank you that today you have called us to worship you and learn of you. You alone know our needs. Satisfy them with your unchanging love. In your presence, may we find comfort in sorrow, guidance in perplexity, strength to meet temptation, grace to overcome the fascination of disobedience and courage to face up to the hostility of the rebellious world. Above all, may we meet Jesus and go out from our worship and dwelt by his spirit. This prayer we, may, we ask to your glory in his name. Amen. Our opening hymn today is Honor and Praise. Please see the insert. be seated and now let us come before the Lord in prayer let us bow let the world go away and focus on the Almighty who is ever more ready to hear than we are to pray let us pray in the midst of our summer lives O Lord so many things have claimed our attention we work hard this year to earn a little rest and recreation and to break away from the stresses of our everyday living. But in the midst of all this change, we have too often pushed our worship of you aside. We have focused so much on our needs for physical change and peace that we've neglected our spiritual hungers and thirst. Forgive us when we are tempted to stray from our worship of you 
and focus entirely on ourselves and on our own needs. As we celebrate this day, help us to remember all the wondrous things you continue to do for us. Let us look at the world as a place of delight. And when we encounter situations in which sorrow and hurt abound, help us to be ready to bring hope and peace. Be with us in these warm days of summer, preparing us for ministry and mission. Lord of the dance of life, you have breathed into us your creative, joyful spirit. You have lifted us from the dust into the swirling joy of your presence. We are so grateful for all that you have done for us. Each day reminds us in many ways of your mercy and your love. Yet there are times in our lives when we have felt lost and alone. We have been hurt and frightened and yes, we have wondered where you were. Remind us again of your loving presence. Place your hands of healing on our lives. Comfort us when we become afraid, lost, lonely, and fearful. Prepare us to serve you faithfully all our days. And we lift up in our hearts the names of our dear ones who are in need of your healing, your love, and your comfort. Cause us to reflect on our own needs for your love and our response in dedicated service to you. Be with us now in this time and in this place and in all the times and all the places of our lives. For we pray together in the name of Jesus who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And hear now these words of assurance. God is merciful and pours out God's love on us abundantly. In Jesus Christ's name, we are forgiven. Hallelujah and amen. And as we praise God for all God's gifts to us, let us now prepare to bring forward our tithes and offerings, and let this be a time of meditation for all God's generous care for us as we prepare to return to God the gifts for the building of God's kingdom.
your faithfulness, O Lord, to us. We ask humbly now that you accept these gifts we return to you. May our faithfulness to you only grow and our faithfulness to building the kingdom on earth. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. The epistle lesson today comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. Praise be to the, God, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us to, for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven, and on earth under Christ. Our Psalter today is Psalm 24. This is found on page 755 of your hymnal, if you wish to read along in the responsive readings. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and those who dwell therein. For God has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in God's holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek the Lord, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is the ruler of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the ruler of glory may come in. Who is this ruler of glory? The Lord of hosts. The Lord is the ruler of glory. This is the word of the Lord. And now let us stand as able for the reading of the gospel. And our gospel this morning continues with the study of the book of Mark. We are reading Mark Six, what is it, six? Ah, here we are. It's Mark six, six B. What is it? Mark six, six B to six Six B, B there, okay. Then Jesus went about among the villages teaching. He called the 12 and began to send them out two by two. He gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their head, belts, but to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you, and if they refuse to hear you as you leave, shake off the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent. They cast out many demons and anointed the oil many were sick and cured them. Now King Herod heard of it, for Jesus' name had become well known, and some were saying, John the Baptizer has been raised from the dead, but for this reason these powers are at work in him. But others said it is Elijah, and others said it's a prophet, like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard it, he said, John, whom I have beheaded, has been raised. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
I can't tell you what a joy it is to stand up here and hear you singing behind me. It's absolutely wonderful, and it really lifts the spirit. For although we were singing in our hearts all these months, now we can praise with our voices as well. And just as we are moving on in ministry, we have a story this morning of how Jesus moved his ministry ahead no matter what types of obstacles and criticism he faced in the world. Because we're told at the very beginning this morning, Jesus called the 12 to him, this is early on in his ministry, and he began sending them out two by two. And here we have repeated another one of those biblical motifs. And this is what's exciting when you get to digging into the word and studying the whole picture because there are patterns that we see repeated over and over throughout the entire Bible. Beginning in Genesis, God instructed Noah to take two of each species into the ark. And the concept of two was very important in the interpretation of the law. For instance, in Numbers 3530 we read, if anyone kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death on the evidence of witnesses, but no person shall be put to death and the testimony of only one witness. And Deuteronomy 17.6 says the same thing. On the evidence of two witnesses, or three, the one who is to die will be put to death. A person shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. It's not a very cheerful way of thinking of things, not something we want to meditate on, but it showed the interpretation of the law and the importance of people working in pairs and twos to collaborate and support each other. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10 admonishes, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. And so on. And in the New Testament, the book of Matthew, the author tells us that Quote, if a brother sins against you, go to him privately, confront him with his fault. If he listens and confesses it, you've won back a brother. But if not, then take two others with you and go back again, proving everything you say to these witnesses. And this is actually the biblical foundation of our safe sanctuaries policy. It's one of the scout policies as well that we always work two by two when we're working especially with young people. It's a definitely a biblical approach to caring for one another, supporting each other, and collaborating testimony. So two by two, Jesus sends them out. Now this was new. This was new. And what we're witnessing here is the very first missionary initiative. Today, we routinely send out youth missions through Appalachian Service Project or the Eastern Pennsylvania Mission Team. They've gone into places to do cleanup after Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Tratina, the, um, the flooding up in Bucks County, or wherever there is a need. We send out groups, we send out people. Today, we send people to Africa. Uh, I just met a wonderful a uh, group last night at a dinner talking about a, a, a nonprofit that they started in Kenya, and we're going to be learning more about them and how we can partner with them. And we just recently cleaned out a lot of the hymnals, old Bibles, things we no longer use. They went to Liberia. So in partnership, we are bringing the new good news around the world in more ways every time 
and in every way, and we're constantly learning new ways, but it all started here when Jesus sent out the disciples two by two. So when Jesus began sending the original 12 out two by two, he was beginning that movement to take the gospel to the entire world, not just this little closed group of people who lived together, thought alike, but the entire world, going city by city, neighborhood by neighborhood, country by country. No longer would people have to travel to Jesus to learn and be healed. The word was going out. They might well have been going out to the words of the hymn writer Leon Atkins, who wrote some 1,500 years later, it's in our hymnal. Go make of all disciples, we hear thy cry, O Lord, that comes from thee, our Father, in thy eternal word. The task looms large before us, we follow without fear. In heaven and earth thy power shall bring God's kingdom here. And now it was also the custom of that day, in Jesus' day, when a servant was sent out to deliver a message, that servant was sent with the full authority of the master. So it was that Jesus sent out these first missionaries, and when he issued the final, ultimate great commission that he has been leaving the earth for the last time in the last chapter of Matthew, what we today call the Great Commission, he's clearly vesting that authority in the disciples and in us, who are the people who are the inheritors of the original disciples. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. Therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always even to the end of the age. And what does it mean? What does it look like for each one of us in our daily lives and for us as a congregation to take that authority today? And what does it look like everyday lives and in our ministry to the community? For this commission from our scripture in Mark today was far from a safe and easy call in a simple time. And this is why we need to look at the entire scope of what is going on in the world at the time these words are written down. This story of Jesus sending out the disciples two by two is sandwiched in between our scripture from last week where Jesus was rejected and scorned by the elders as he preached in the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. And right after this story, and we read a little bit of it, is of King Herod's reaction when he heard about the power of Jesus' teaching and the people reacting to it, and this movement of people going out. You can visualize it, think about it. Think about people setting out, being blessed as one goes this way, another group goes, what a scene it must have been as they were sent out. And so the Herod was very threatened by this. And when he heard about this power and the people's reaction to it, he immediately felt his authority threatened. But not only that, he's showing a little bit more than a little guilt of what he had done to John the Baptist. If you recall the story, he made a foolish promise that somebody could have anything they asked for. And when they said they wanted the head of John the Baptist on a plate, he did not go back on his promise. And what did it cost him for the rest of his life with the guilt and the shame that he may not have felt until now when he feels perhaps John the Baptist has come back. John whom I beheaded has come back from the dead. And then he begins to ask, who is this man? I think he had a few sleepless nights or more than a few. But what we have here in these few verses between Jesus empowering the disciples to go forth and Herod's exertion of power by force in the beheading of John the Baptist to please the whims of a rash promise he made, Herod's source of power is his own ego and he will destroy anything in his path to get what he thinks he needs. Jesus' power is exactly the opposite of Herod's. 
Jesus' source of power is God Almighty, and Jesus becomes the channel of that power to the weak, the downtrodden, the outcast, the rejected. Herod destroys. Jesus builds up. Jesus empowers hope where there is no hope, healing where there is, no pa where there is such pain and a future uh, once, uh, once the past is forgiven. And again, as a hymn writer has put in it, pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Stra thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow, blessings all mine, 10,000 beside. Imagine, if you will, what it must have felt like to live as an unwanted outcast, condemned by those in charge as worthless, hopeless, of no use. We speak of such people in dire circumstances today as marginalized. They are outside the margins of society. And so perhaps we, in our own lives have come to a point where we made a mistake or someone hurt us or did something to us or there was something whether it was within our control or not whether it was a decision we made or whether we are the trickle down effect of someone else's bad decision what would it be like to feel at that point your life's over there is no hope there is no going back but that at least until you meet the master. And we learn that our past need not be our future, our loss need not destroy us, and our illness, whether body or soul, does not have to define us. Stop and think for a moment also how history just might have been different if instead of reaching out of fear, guilt, ego-driven power, Herod had said, who is this man? I must find out. I must learn more. Is it possible that I, Herod, could be forgiven for all the wrongs I have done, especially the foolish decision I made to honor a foolish promise and cause the beheading of John the Baptist? Paul, in his letter to the Ephesian church that Kevin read for us this morning, has put it this way. How blessed is God. What a blessing God is. He's the father of our master, Jesus Christ, and takes us to the high places of blessing with him. Long before he laid down the earth's foundations, he had us in mind, and he settled on us the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. That gift is there for the taking and for the acceptance. Paul goes on, because of the sacrifice of the Messiah, his blood poured out on the altar of the cross, we're a free people, free of penalties, free of punishments chalked up in our misdeeds. And not just barely free either, abundantly free. God thought of everything and provided for everything we could possibly need, letting us in on the plans God took such delight in making. What good news. There is forgiveness with God. There's new life, there's hope. And when we put our hand into the hand of the master and give our lives to working with him from this point on, we're fulfilling God's will for all God's people for all eternity. Paul sums it up again in Ephesians like this. God set it all out before us in Christ a long-range plan in which everything would be brought together and summed up in him. Everything in deepest heaven, everything on our planet Earth. This is indeed good news. This is the powerful message that Jesus gave to the disciples as he sent them out two by two on that first missionary journey. That message comes down through the ages to us today as fresh and powerful as it was the first time. Our daily lives can become a nightmare of deadlines, worries, pressures, fears, anxieties, and such is the stuff of our hectic lives, even without the pressure of the COVID recovery. 
When is the last time that you sat in stillness long enough to put the noise of the world behind so you could see clearly the blessings in your life? The large problems you've overcome and are behind you are the small everyday moments of grace and glory. We're going to take some time right now you have an index card in your bulletin this morning. Open your heart as we have some meditative quiet time here together and think and just say thank you, Lord. Uh, no names need to go on this and if you're watching from home, comment on Facebook or call the church. Just call and leave a message so that we can begin as we move forward in ministry from this time and as we are prayerfully considering how God is calling us to a new ministry in a newly defined world as we come back together in full ministry in the fall, take some time to celebrate the blessings that God has given you. And then we will begin by praising God for all God has done to bring us to this point, but also for all God is going to do from here on. As I've said to a couple of people as we're planning for the future, we've got to get our sea legs back. We've got to learn how to work together again as a congregation. But before we do anything, we need to praise God and thank God for our blessings, because that is the foundation on which we will build our leap into the future, and it will be our witness once we once again go to the world two by two. So take this time right now, use this time, and then we will sing prayerfully together. And now, as we meditate over the things that we have written, let us remain seated and prayerfully sing this beautiful closing hymn, praising God for all God's blessings.
forth in praise. Go forth in power, two by two, to the world, and take the good news. There will be a basket at the very back to receive your cards, or again, you may comment on Facebook, call the office. We will praise God together as we go forward. And may the God of all the earth watch over you, comfort you, and empower you. Amen. Thank you.